Hey, welcome back! As you can guess by the title, today we're delving deep into the history, design and the enduring influence of the AK-47. From its inception in the aftermath of World War II to its widespread adoption by military forces and insurgents worldwide, the AK-47 has left an incredible mark on modern warfare. So join me as we explore the genius behind Mikhail Kalashnikov's masterpiece, the firepower it delivers and the cultural impact it's had on today's society. The story of the AK-47 starts off with the birth of Mikhail Kalashnikov himself. Kalashnikov was born in the village of Kurya, in present-day Altai Krai, which is in Russia, as the 17th child of the 19 children of Alexandra Frolovna Kalashnikova and Timofey Alexandrovich Kalashnikov, who were peasants. In 1930, his father and most of his family had their properties confiscated by the states and they were deported as kulaks to the village of Nizhnya Mohovaya, Tomsk Oblast. After the deportation to Tomsk Oblast, his family had to combine farming with hunting. Due to this, Mikhail frequently used his father's rifle in his teens, which was where his interest in guns is said to have sparked. After completing 7th grade, Mikhail, with his stepfather's permission, left his family and returned to Korea, where he was sent to work at a nearby weapons design bureau. However, his time at the weapons design bureau would be short-lived, as he was mobilized into the Red Army in 1938. Because of his small size and engineering skills, he was assigned as a tank mechanic and later became a tank commander. While training, he made his first inventions, which concerned not only tanks but also small arms weapons, and he was eventually awarded with a wristwatch by Georgi Zhukov. Unfortunately, Kalashnikov would be wounded in October in the Battle of Bryansk in 1941. In the last few months of him being in hospital, he overheard some fellow soldiers bemoaning their current rifles, which were plagued by reliability issues such as jamming. As he continued to overhear the complaints that the Soviet soldiers had, as soon as he was discharged, he went on to work on what would become the famous AK-47 assault rifle. Seeing the drawbacks of the standard infantry weapons at the time, he decided to construct a new rifle for the Soviet military. During this time, Kalashnikov began designing his submachine gun. Although his first submachine gun did not get accepted into service, his talent as a designer was noticed. In the 1944 competition, Kalashnikov designed a gas-operated carbine with a standard cartridge. This weapon, influenced by the Garand rifle design, lost out to the new Simonov carbine which would be eventually adopted as the SKS. However, Kalashnikov refused to give up. In 1946, a new design competition was initiated to develop a new rifle. Kalashnikov submitted a gas-operated rifle with a short-stroke gas piston above the barrel, a breech-lock mechanism similar to his 1944 carbine and a curved 30-round magazine. As the rifles were being tested, one of Kalashnikov's assistants, Alexander Zaitsev, suggested a major redesign to improve reliability. At first, Kalashnikov was reluctant, given that the rifle had already fared better than its competitors. However, Zaitsev would eventually manage to persuade Kalashnikov. In November 1947, the new prototypes, or AK-47s, were completed. The rifle used a long stroke gas piston above the barrel, the upper and lower receivers were combined into a single receiver. The selector and safety were combined into a single control lever, which was on the right side of the rifle. And the bolt handle was simply attached to the bolt carrier. This simplified the design and the production of the rifle. The initial army trial series commenced in the early months of 1948. During these trials, the new rifle demonstrated its reliability in various conditions and showcased its user-friendly handling features. Subsequently, in 1949, it was officially embraced by the Soviet army and had been designated as the 7.62mm Kalashnikov rifle, or as we know it, the AK-47. However, although Kalashnikov had now finally gotten his rifle approved for mass production, there were many difficulties during the initial phase of production. The first production models had stamped sheet metal receivers with a milled trunnion and buttstock insert and a stamped body. These difficulties in welding to these parts led to high rejection rates which meant that many of the firearms produced had defects or issues, making them unsuitable for use. Due in part to these challenges, the Soviets faced obstacles in providing a substantial quantity of new rifles to their soldiers until 1956. 
Throughout this period, production of the interim SKS rifle persisted. Once the manufacturing difficulties of non-milled receivers had been overcome, a redesigned version designated the AKM, where M stands for modernized or upgraded in Russian, Avtomat Kalashnikov Modernizovny was introduced in 1959. The rifle was also roughly one lighter than the previous model. The first time the AK-47 would see action would be in the 1956 Hungarian uprising against the socialist government. The AK-47 played a pivotal role in aiding the Soviet army during the Hungarian uprising of 1956 by providing their troops with a reliable and effective firearm. Its widespread use ensured that Soviet forces were well equipped to suppress the rebellion swiftly and to maintain control in the region. The AK-47 would also see widespread use in the 50s in the Vietnam War and in the Laotian Civil War in Southeast Asia. The 60s would see an even greater use of the AK-47. This list shows which major conflicts it was used in. The 70s and 80s would also see the AK-47's use slightly dwindle. However, it is important to point out that by this point, in 1974, the Soviets began replacing their AK-47s and AKM rifles with a newer design, the AK-74, which used a different cartridge ammunition. The new rifle was more modern and reliable, and the new cartridge was much better against body armor, which is why it was introduced. However, the AK-47 would still be used in conflicts during the early 1990s, early 2000s, and 2010s. It has most recently seen use in these conflicts in 2020, including the current conflict in Ukraine, but it does seem like the world is finally moving away from the AK-47. This map shows the current and former AK-47 users. Throughout the world, the AK and its variants are commonly used by governments, revolutionaries, terrorists, criminals, and civilians alike. In some countries, such as Somalia, Rwanda, Mozambique, Congo and Tanzania, the prices for black market AKs can range somewhere between $30 to $150 per weapon. And prices have fallen in the last few decades due to mass counterfeiting. In Kenya, an AK-47 fetches 5 head cattle or about 10,000 Kenyan shillings or 100 US dollars when offered for a barter. But it costs almost half that price when cash is paid. There are even places around the world where the AK type weapon can be purchased on the black market for as little as $6 or traded for a chicken or a sack of grain. The World Bank estimates that out of 500 million total firearms available worldwide, 100 million of them are part of the Kalashnikov family, and 75 million of those are the AK 47s. Because AK type weapons have been made in many countries, often illicitly, it is impossible to know how many exist exactly. As so many AKs are now all over the world, the cultural impact of the rifle has been impossible to miss. In the pro-communist states, the AK-47 became a symbol of the Third World Revolution. US and Western European countries frequently associate the AK-47 with their enemies, both Cold War era and present day. For example, Western works of fiction, which includes movies, televisions, novels or video games, often portray criminals, gang members, insurgents and terrorists using the AK-47 as the weapon of choice. Conversely, throughout the developing world, the AK-47 can also be seen as an attributary to revolutionaries against foreign occupation, imperialism or colonialism. The AK-47 can even be seen in some state symbols, such as the former coat of arms of Burkina Faso and the current flag of Mozambique, which was adopted on the 1st of May 1983, which was 40 years ago. But I know what you're thinking, what happened to our old friend Mikhail Kalashnikov? During his career, Mikhail Kalashnikov designed about 150 models of different weapons. The most famous of them are the AK-47, of course, the AKM, the AK-74, the AK-101, the AK-105, the AK-12, the RKPK, and the RPK-74. Unfortunately, after a prolonged illness, Mikhail Kalashnikov was hospitalized on the 17th of November 2013 in an Udmurtian medical facility in Izhevsk, the capital of Udmurtia and where he lived. Before his death, he wrote a letter to the leader of the Russian Orthodox Church, Patriarch Kirill, where he stated that he was suffering from spiritual pain about whether he was responsible for the deaths caused by the weapons he created. Translated from the published letters, he states, I keep having the same unsolved question. If my rifle claimed people's lives, then can I be that I, a Christian Orthodox believer, was to blame for their deaths? The Patriarch wrote back, thanked Kalashnikov and said that he was an example of patriotism and the correct attitude towards the country. Real added about the design responsibility for the deaths by the rifle. 
where he said, The church has a well-defined position when the weapon is defense of the motherland. The church supports its creators and the military, which use it. Mikhail Kalashnikov would die on December the 23rd, 2013, at the age of 94 from a gastric hemorrhage. He became one of the first people buried in the Federal Military Memorial Cemetery. On the 19th of September in 2017, a 9 meters or 30 foot monument of Kalashnikov was unveiled in central Moscow, which depicts Kalashnikov clutching his famous automatic weapon, the AK-47. Good night.